My book of the year is James Lesden's The Fall Guy. Lionel Shriver reviewed it for the FT in January and she recommended it to me. She's a very astute judge. This is a brilliant psychological thriller about money, betrayal and power, and the dangers of being a gooseberry. The gooseberry here is Matthew, the narrator, an impoverished New Yorker who goes to spend the summer with his rich banker cousin, Charlie, and Charlie's beautiful wife, Chloe. Soon, a sense of unease befalls them. Two or three hours of solitude lay ahead of him. It seemed to him, oddly, that he was capable of doing something he might regret if he weren't careful, though he couldn't imagine what form any such action might take. He considered his options. My book for the summer is called The Great Leveller by Walter Scheidel. This book argues that ever since the agricultural revolution 10,000 years ago, whenever there's stability, societies tend to become more un unequal. Inequality is cumulative. And what stops it? His answer is very clear. Four different kinds of violent ruptures have flattened inequality. Mass mobilization warfare, transformative revolution, state failure, and lethal pandemics. I call these the four horsemen of leveling. In other words, clever policy devised by economists or politicians doesn't do anything, only disaster does. We can't want disaster, so we're gonna to have to live with inequality. It's a depressing conclusion, but it's a very powerful argument. Carlos Magdalena, the plant messiah. It's a romp in the tradition of 19th and 20th century plant hunters. So um, Carlos was born in northern Spain to a very ordinary family. He manages somehow, through an absolute passion and obsession for plants, um, to get to find his way to the UK and get into Kew. And at Kew, he finally trains as a botanist, which is extraordinary in itself, and then gets a job whizzing around the world as a plant hunter um, in some very dangerous situations, including bathing with electric eels and then seeing a water lily area and he thinks must get this very rare water lily but what about the crocodiles so the water's clear and the water lily pads are far enough apart that he thinks he'll risk it so he dives into this crocodile infested water and collects the rare seed it's a great romp read it thomas wright's all measures short of war is for me a really excellent guide to what's at stake as donald trump pursues an america first foreign policy which in some important respects questions the liberal international order that America's built over the decades since the Second World War, and which relies on an American commitment to things like free trade and to the US alliance system, commitments that Trump is now questioning. Wright argues that the liberal orders always rested on American power and a willingness to uphold it. Without such power and leadership, it's fragile and vulnerable. And he goes on to argue that the liberal orders works not just for the world in general, but also specifically for the United States. And that while it might be tempting for Trump and his cohorts to step back from that liberal order, in the long run, the US will pay a heavy price if it does so.